Hello and welcome to the Car Karen channel and welcome back to our 600,000 mile Lexus that we are restoring here on the channel. So as we talked about in the last episode, I am about to take a semi-long trip. It's not super long, but it is long for a 600,000 mile car. So in today's video, we want to prepare this car for this trip. We're going to do a few last little stuff that will make this trip a little better will make it easier on us and then i'll give you a big update because there are a few things that happen off camera you guys would want to know about let's get started so the first thing we're going to start with is the door lock which currently the driver's door lock if you look right here it uh no good and there's nothing like driving in a lexus ls and this is how your locking unlocking situation looks like you look like you're driving a manual window corolla from the old days so we're going to take care of that but did you know something about toyotas so right now door lock is unlocked you notice it didn't beep there's no beeping but if i hit unlock it beeps Something about Toyota locks, they have a kind of a relay signal. So when the lock locks, the wireless receiver actually receives a signal that the doors did indeed lock. And that's what happens. That's where the beep happens. The beep is a confirmation. It's not a noise for you to know. So when it doesn't receive a signal that the door physically locked, it actually won't beep. So right now, we're unlocked. Nothing, it actually keeps trying. It tries twice to lock that lock. Nothing, it just stops and it doesn't beep. So that's something for you to know. But for now, let's tear into this door and we can replace the door lock actuator. Let's take our door panel off. This is where non-rusty cars, things are scary when you get into plastic interiors. Gotta be really careful. The LS has like 17 million bolts for the door panel. This is something with cars. The older the car is, the more bolts it have for panels and stuff. The newer it is, the less bolts you have. Something else I want to take care, take a look at this one. See how it's, it's just like, it's loose. No guarantees we're going to fix it, but let's at least see well, if there's anything to be done about it. The older Toyotas used to have these, used to have bolts at the very bottom. Like I remember 2001, like, like 97, 2001 Camry had these bolts at the bottom. And then the switch will have one more, one last one. There it goes. Master switch. Do you want to come off? Yes. Ew. It doesn't look very nice. I'm going to clean that a little bit. Okay. I think. Oh, I got a penny dropped. That's okay. <laughs> this car is already paying us there. How about that? Now oh, we got two quarters. Nickel? Why not? Hey, this is a car that uh, the more stuff you take apart, the more you get paid. Go. Got that. A few connectors here. entire bottom section of this is oh that's the piece we're trying to fix okay okay don't break don't break i feel like this is gonna break so bad oh here we go are you serious right now don't break don't break okay i think i got this one it's very very nice and disgusting 
There we go. It's very not nice. Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, maybe I should have worn gloves with this. That's okay. Okay, well, here's the door panel. And of course, in the typical LS fashion, look at that. It's a lot of insulation, folks. This is, this is why these cars are so quiet. And I think somebody potentially has been here, but they've been careful. They left this uh, vapor barrier seal on. And there's something else that, uh, small update. So I was driving the car and all of a sudden I hit a bump and the radio came on for like 20 minutes, then it went out again. This speaker actually was, all the speakers were good, except the subwoofer, completely blown. We're gonna, we still have to look into the radio situation. But for now, let's get my door lock working and start with very carefully removing this. I don't wanna rip the seal, because then we would have a really sleepless night. The nice thing is, this car has been outside and it's a little bit of a warmer day today. So it's gotten really hot. And when this butyl tape, I think it's called, gets hot, it comes off easier. Well, it's really cold, like if you're working in the winter, yeah, good luck getting this off. Even the compressor agrees, see? Now, we gotta put the window up. And just gonna plug our master switch here. First thing we're gonna do here is unplug it. That's the big plug for the door. Then, this is the design of all Toyota and Lexus. This is old school design. So the latch, we are replacing the entire latch. You cannot get a motor for this OEM. So we're getting an OEM latch, you'll see that in a bit. But it wraps around the door, like it's in this section, here's the latch, and it's like an L shape. And it goes behind the window run channel. So usually you have a 10 right here. This one has another 10 here to remove it. So, or at least sometimes not completely remove it, just loosen it. Some of them has, have a connection in the middle. Some of them do not. This one does. So I can pull this entire thing out, get it out of my way. See this little notch? So the run, window run channel is two pieces. This one connects to the bottom. This is a favorable design. If you go into something like an LS400, it's all one piece. So you have to really do heavy disassembly to get this out. Makes it a lot more difficult. And this is where you start seeing how the uh, kind of designs got better over time. It's not necessarily a bad design as it'll break, but bad design as in it's a pain to work on. However, this does have the uh, bad design of the rod and this is impossible to show you on camera but i'll show you when we get it off let's see if this one 600,000 miles i i stand corrected my friends usually this is a severe fight so there's a rod that goes into a, a little grommet impossible to pull off because you don't have leverage and you pull on it just bends the rod and you can't pull it this one came right out that is pretty cool that saves us a lot of time so there is one some of them will have two rods which this one does not i'll show you the two designs so you know them however this has a second design which means we're going to have to remove the physical lock out so some of them the lock will have another rod some of them the lock has to come out this one the lock has to come out and you remove this little rubber grommet and there will be a little there we go here it is a little torx bolt right here this is by the way all toyota and lexus even the newer ones to remove that you just get to this little torx which is oh wonderful the one socket that I have broken. Is it? No. It's good. We are good. And just for if you're doing this, this bolt does not come out. 
You just loosen it and it stays there. Then this will happen. Hopefully, sometimes you pull the handle will help you. Well, this LS is a different case because this is supposed to be clipped on here. But normally, this will happen. And you'll get the whole lock cylinder out because this goes into the latch. And it'll, by removing this, it'll give you so much room to work. It's beautiful. So now that we got it this far, we have a few. And this is an LS special. These two torques. I don't know why they're torques, but they are. And then this is every single Toyota out there. These are Torx. The three locating bolts. These bolts are very important because they have a locator on them. Basically, this centers the latch in place. And you notice the latch already moved. Now, we are no longer mechanics. Now we are delivering babies. So this is extremely difficult. Oh. Doesn't look very difficult, but talk to me after you've done an LS400. Here's the latch, and here's that rod that I was telling you about. This is basically what the outside door handle pulls on to unlatch the, the, the latch, so you can open the door. This has a little grommet inside that this clips into. Very difficult to remove these because you don't have access and you pull on it here, starts bending this. And uh, yeah, some people will say, and here's the door lock actuator itself. Some people will say, why don't you just replace the door lock actuator? Well, number one, they don't sell them OEM. Number two, by the time you take this apart, just replace the whole thing. It's expensive. You drive an LS. This is not a Camry or a Corolla where you're trying to save corners. Don't cut corners with an LS. I see this mistake all the time. And before we install the new one, let us do some housekeeping is uh, 600,000 miles worth of uh, crud. It would be nice to clean this up. No, it really doesn't make any difference, but hey, it won't hurt, it won't hurt. Well, that's a lot better than how it was. It's not perfect, but hey, it works. So let's install our new latch, which is a brand new OEM latch. Very nice and shiny, and it is the correct size. Let's install it. First, let's put our cables, which this latch does come with new cables. Put this in here. And let's see, where are we hanging up? There we go. That's seated in position. Install these little bolts. Now, before we continue any further, Let's test it out, make sure everything is good. And let's plug in our master switch real quick. And we're gonna watch this cable, this bottom cable, the white one. There we go. That's working, we are good. Let's fully assemble this. The first thing we're gonna do is attach our not fun cable or rod. Usually installing it is not as bad. It does have a safety lock. And uh, that's pretty much it. Still gotta put the outside door lock. Let's install our window run channel. Just two bolts, not one bolt. Just two is better than one. Let's see if this 
this is lined up it is lined up usually if these don't line up that means you did not clip the top in so now it is clipped in there's one bolt here one bolt at the top well that pretty much wraps up our operation here let's see if we can put this back on these cables have to go through the vapor barrier Sure, this paper barrier goes on well, which it already is not. Well, that's on. Let's put our lock in. Let's just put this in and push it. Tighten your torques. That's it. That's good. And then the most important part, and the part that makes or breaks this job. The rubber grommet. Now the most important part before you put everything back you got to make sure that your door outside door handle is working properly so what I'm going to do screwdriver I'm going to simulate the latch the striker which closes the latch now if you look here the latch is closed I'm going to pull my door handle yep that's working and just for good measure test it a couple times that's working we're good now we can reassemble this door. So let's figure out, before I put this door panel back, because we're ready to do that, what's going on with this? Every time you close the door, this just pops out, makes a horrible noise. So in order to do that, Lexus actually put four very nice cutouts in the insulation for four bolts that hold that whole pocket off. So let's, let's take it off and see what happens. And full disclosure, we are doing this for the first time. I've never really taken one of these off. I have to be honest here because they rarely break, but this one is, uh, let's just say a special case. Four screws and let's see what we have here. Okay, I feel something already dropped. Put these screws away. I see a lot of stuff that fell off that I think shouldn't have fallen off. Okay. There's a spring just sitting here. Okay. Well, let's do some experimenting here. So what do we have? See one more screw. A little bushing that fell off. So how does this work? There's a gear. I think this just fell off. So we basically what we're going to have to do is first clean this. Very nice opportunity to clean this little drawer. Then we're going to have to, uh, how should I say it, re-engineer the wheel? Because this is the kind of stuff that Lexus does not give you any shape or form of instructions. Nothing. You just, you just have to figure this out. So let's do some figuring out. This gear, see stuff that are broken, so I wonder if this is indeed broken. I know on the door panel we had some, uh, let's look at the door panel here. So there's a gear here, just spins, wait, is this supposed to come out too? I think this is supposed to come out. Yeah, this is supposed to come out. Aha, there we go. That'll be the clue. Or not. Does this have another screw? Oh yeah, that's very nice. We have one more screw here, folks. There it goes. That's what we were looking for. Well, let's see what we see here, because I would really like to get this fixed. And if we don't fix it, at least we had a chance to really clean this area up, which you can never reach with the thing assembled. All right, let's see here. So, 
Let's sit there, and I already see stuff broken, which gives me an indication that I don't think this is going to be successful. So, this is locked up. No, it's not. How about the other side? I think I put this backwards. Okay, so this goes like that. This is just the little mechanism that makes it run up and down the little slide here. So now we got it. What we got to discover is together is how does this stay up or kind of hold it in position? There's a spring that somehow hooks on here, which is very, very broken right now. Hmm. I think I got one of them on. Let's see if my thinking is, oh, I see the problem. I see the problem, folks. So if you look at the spring, how it's seated, it's seated here and it's seated there. This spring kind of stabilizes the door when it opens. But if I flip it and show you the other side, you see how the seat of the spring is broken? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna drill a tiny little hole here and see if we can get our spring there and see if this actually works. Let's try it, it's worth a shot. Let's try this very carefully. It should be very easy to drill through. Okay, well, let's first try it. See if this hole is big enough for our spring to go through it. Yeah, it's more than big. Perfect. Let's clean this up and we'll reassemble everything and see if we actually made it work. This is the perfect opportunity to clean the very, very bottom of these things. Usually door, you know, door panels. You can't really get all the way to the very bottom and clean it and always collects all kinds of crud. Some of this stuff ain't coming off. Let's see if I can get it by force. No, some of this stuff is not gonna come off. That's fine. At least we tried. Okay, let's assemble our, well, for lack of a better word, our Frankenstein um, door pocket. And let's see if this is actually gonna work. How did I do the other side? Oh, it's on the inside. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think this might actually work. So let's clean the door panel and then we'll install this, see if it worked. Let's see if we can install this and if operation was a success or not. Because I saw something else that is broken. Looks like a hinge. And I don't think that's something we're going to be able to repair. I'm going to have to kind of think about this for a second, figure out an alternative repair. But for now, let's see if this accomplishes what we want. Because what we want is not to use the pocket. What we want is this not to rattle like a tin can every time you close and open the door. Let's see if we're successful with that or not. I'll find out. I hope we are. I really dislike doors that rattle when you open them and close them. And this no longer wants to line up. Why? Why are you being stubborn? Something happened. Oh, something good happened. It snapped it. Now it came off place. Oh, there we go. I think that is good. Let's see. Moment of truth. Are you going to work? Okay, I see the problem. It's a lot better, it's a lot tighter, but the bottom, that hinge, that is broken. 
We're gonna have to revisit this one day because the driver's, this passenger front is also the same. It's a lot better. I don't think this is gonna pop out as easy. Like now it has kind of a thud to it that it did not have. So let's put it together. Let's see what happens. Okay. And dangle this cable through the hole so I can install it later. Probably, no, let's connect the connectors first. Lots of connectors. Usually door panels don't have any connectors, maybe one. This, the LS has a lot of connectors. And then, last but not least, is the door handle. Okay then, I think this door panel is ready to go on. Hook it at the top. This doesn't have a lot of, yeah, I can see, still see the bottom moving and that's the problem. We're going to have to figure something out with that hinge because that's the problem. I want to, before I put this light on, we're going to clean this lens real quick because it's probably, this bulb I've seen better days. It's a 194. I'm just going to put a new bulb so we can see better at night. Got this all cleaned up with a new bulb. Didn't put any LED bulb, just a regular bulb for now will do. I'm trying to be fancy here. Because this whole thing is going to come out again. Now this light is a lot, I want to say better, but it's actually the word I'm looking for is less dim because it's still very dim. This on. Master switch. So now this works and I'm looking at this. No, it's just the rocker is a little loose. It works. But I want to see if this still makes that big rattling noise when you close the door. No, oh, it doesn't. This sounds so good. Listen to that. Oh God. I think we locked the key in the car. Yes, we did. Be right back. We're going to pretend you didn't see that part. Okay, maybe I should get my keys out first. How do we do that? How about that? Let's try that again. This is unlocked. Yes. That sounds good. I'm very happy. And usually when you replace the latch, the door will start making that strong pop because now everything is new and working, making the right sounds. I'm really happy with this. But what I'm not really happy with is the sad state of the steering wheel motors. Let's take care of that real quick. So here's what's going on with the steering. You turn the key on, you can telescope it, except it makes, I hope you can hear that. Like it's not smooth. That's not an issue. You can lubricate the, the shaft that the motor rotates in. But the problem is, I'm moving it up and down. These motors are notorious to go out on these. I say we want to leave it on the all the way out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace and it went back in. Forgot that part. Thank you, Lexus, for that. Let's remove the steering wheel. And you do not have to remove the steering wheel, but we are removing the steering wheel because it actually makes this a little easier to access through the front, not to have to go all the way. We're still going to have to go crawling underneath. It just makes life easier. And Toyota steering wheels are some of the easiest in the planet to remove. Here's that. Here's our airbag, which is an old school airbag. Not the newer style dual stage, this is a single stage airbag. Pretty interesting. These are the ones that don't have the issues that we have today with airbags. Just connect that. 19 millimeter nut for the steering wheel, always. So if you want to remove it, it's stuck. 
it's not going anywhere. So this is a uh, moment of controlled violence. You just do this. Came right out. It takes a little bit of experience, but here is one uh, very not cool. This whole leather is coming off. We're gonna get to this at some point when we start working on the interior and kind of the beauty stuff. But right now we still have mechanical stuff to do. So I'm gonna remove the steering covers here, steering column covers, and we'll continue. So oh, almost all Toyotas will have these two screws right here, even Lexus. Older ones will have one more at the bottom. Remember, everything needed somehow more screws back in the day. And this is gonna be a little tricky to get out with the column all the way in. And this is the hard part, I suppose. There I go. As you catch the lip of one of them, you can push the other one up. It comes right out. Here's the top cover. Bottom cover stuck on the switch. There we go. Then it is very disgusting. So let's uh, keep this outside the car for now. Let's give it a clean later. So now I think in every case will be different. This motor is accessible right there, but we're gonna still want to remove this bottom surround. First, give you guys a look and then work with comfort. I don't like to work in very tight space if I don't have to. So first we're gonna remove the very, very bottom cover here. And the things we're gonna find here, it's like a treasure hunt. More, more coins perhaps. That'll be nice, this car's already paying us back. This clip does not want to come off because it's just being oh, oh. <coughs> uh, Yeah, that was not good. Okay, OBD2 connector, which is full of leaves. I don't understand how leaves can get in here, but somehow 600,000 miles, they managed to do that. Oh, this is extremely unpleasant, I have to say that. Okay, one more. It's fine, we'll vacuum this out. This is not nice. By the way, did you know that the LS has a little switch underneath the steering, you know, the area where you can raise and lower the volume of the chirp when you hit lock, unlock. In case you didn't know that, the least Easter egg. We're gonna remove this entire thing and I don't like the noises it's making so we're gonna have to be really careful I know some of these panels have to come off like this one and the trip one this is very very scary Boy, this stuff is old I have seen better days Really gentle here. Every time one of these panels pop in an old car, it's like you get so scared that something's gonna break, or what are you gonna do? You have to remove it. So, okay. Whew, blood pressure can come down now. So, in order to remove this, we have a bolt here. I believe there's an, yep, another one there. Let's get a 10. Only difference is, this is not a customer's car. It's my car. So if something breaks, I'll be upset, but then I'll get over it. But let's not plan on that happening today. So, if I remember correctly, there is more stuff to be removed on the LS. Like the little pocket here has to be removed for this panel to come off. So this whole pocket somehow slides out. This 
So it's this one. Gone off memory here at some point. I don't remember how this went. We'll just look at the manual. Uh, see, I'm not getting old. I did remember this right. This has to come off to expose this is the one bolt here. And then there is one bolt. Watch well, this screw. I feel like we're forgetting something. Let's see what that is. No, we're not forgetting anything. That's it. This ring around the rosy, around the there we go. This ring has to come off as well. Usually that goes flying off. Anything else? Okay, just lots of leaves. And uh, inside temp sensor and the hose. Hose. Oh, that came out. That's a surprise. Now, while we take this off, can somebody explain to me how did the owner of this car, which by the way, I really, really wish to connect with them, just to listen more to the car story, not through somebody else, number one. Number two, for them to know that I hope they approve of what we're doing, because in the end, they are the owners, the original owners, and I hope they know that their car is, I hope, in good hands. But would you explain to me, original owner, how did we get leaves inside here? I, mean, I can understand the passenger side, you know, open vent for the AC, but I have leaves here. This is going to need a lot of cleaning, so we'll do that before we put it together. But now we must focus on the job at hand. So one note. If you just want to replace the tilt motor, you could get away without removing this entire bottom. I want to remove the bottom because we want to lubricate the shaft for the telescope motor and it did not want to work in a tight space. Just telling you in case you're following this as a DIY video. This is the connector for the tilt motor and the tilt motor sits right here. So I'm going to get this connector out. We can without a fight. There it goes. This is actually the connector for the motor and it comes with it. The motor has two hex bolts, one here, one on the side. Let me get my hex sockets and get this roll. Okay, are you an eight? You are not an eight. Are you a six? I think you are a six. You are a six. There's one bolt. Let's see if we can get this one this time. There's the other one. Now come the interesting part. You lift this up and get the motor down and then unscrew it just to get it a little bit more room. So here is here is the deal. These motors will have a C-clip. Let's hope the C-clip doesn't go flying and we'll never find it. This is really the most difficult part of this job. It's not really super difficult, but just, just gotta be careful. A man 600,000 mile clip is a good. It's not retirement time, but close. This clip does not wanna come off. And I got the uh, pick, it's a 90 degree pick. Funny story about this Milwaukee pick, which I don't really have a set of. There was a glass guy, came at dealership to do a glass piece for us. And he forgot it. And apparently after that, he left the company and his pick now is not working. Yep. I'm gonna use channel locks. And I could never get him, get a hold of him. Tell him, hey, you left your tool. So it stayed, and it stayed. And just nobody seemed to care from his company. There we go, got it. Here's the Z-clip. 
that's basically what locks the motor in the final position so now when you unscrew the motor it comes out and it'll have another c-clip on the other side I'll show you once the motor is out there's the motor that's it all it does is just pushes this up and down so you see the other c-clip and the other c-clip that we removed sits all the way at the tip and this is a stop that's how it stops so this motor is is it a 600,000 mile motor yes it is so it has a date on it December 14th 2000 this is a 2000 car so this is period correct this is a 600,000 mile motor unknown how long has it been not working so uh, retirement time for you my friend and hello brand new part small notice about this if you own because this is super common on these if you own one of these you can actually get these from japan a lot cheaper just be careful because you're going to have to buy it off of ebay be careful you can get them literally half price for the exact same thing these are a lot more common in a lot of models and this one does carry a date of April 12, 2023. So there is that. It does not have the C clip on it. Do you see how the big C clip is missing? So we're going to swap it out the old one, which basically how I removed the other one. I want you to see it. You find the opening of the C clip, you turn it around, and then you grab the tip of this clip and you just pull it. Sometimes there, these C clips are very difficult to pull. There we go. That came right out. That way it doesn't go flying around on you. I'm going to put this C-clip here. Once it wants to go in. This one is not ready for its home. Give it a little persuasion. If we can. There we go. Beautiful. Now we screw it in place. But before we do, actually, should we do it now or before? Let's do it now so you can see it because that's what I'm doing for the other one. So you take the motor and you put, I've tried everything, any grease will work, but what works really well, but it makes a huge mess, wheel grease. Put it right at the tip of the shaft. And that's what we're gonna do for the other motor to quiet it down. Because this, this mechanism starts making so much noise and just, squeaking and kind of rattling and like binding it's because this thing is dry so this one has grease i'm going to grease the other one as well while we're here and that's why i took the whole thing down so i can have really good access for it but the important thing is when you put wheel grease here you got to make sure that when you're done when you moved it a bunch of times you wipe off the excess otherwise it's going to fall on your carpet here we have a mat so we're good put a very liberal amount on the other one because that's the one that is dried and not good so now let's install our motor this motor does have a position and you're gonna have to kind of experiment with it and that's you're gonna see us experiment with it as well I'm gonna put it all the way down and then back it off until we can install it which is not here right no that was right okay right there before we do anything when we forget we got to put our clip on the other side and we got our other clip let's install it yeah that's it ready for another 600,000 right so now before we go too much too far we're gonna want to make sure this motor is actually in position because if it is not this will be the time to adjust it it already is not I'm just going to hand tighten these bolts for now. We're going to test it. Okay, 
times. Let me go plug the battery and we'll see the moment of truth. Okay, find my keys. There they are, and... I still make a noise. Okay, what is making the noise is actually not the motor, it's the steering shaft itself. Because I don't feel the, I feel the vibration here. But voila, we have a working tilt motor now. Just want to make sure it's bottoming out. So this is the adjustment that you got to make. Make sure it bottoms out in both ends. Like right now it's bottomed up. Now let's bring it down. That's good. I like that. But what, we, what I don't like is the horrendous noise that this thing is making. Let's try to fix that. So where we're, where we're going to put grease is where the, the, like the column actually collapses in and out. Let's see if that helps it. Again, I'm going to be very, very, very generous with the amount of grease here. Because this thing is like, I've never seen grease in a very long time. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. That's what's gonna happen here. You just gotta be real careful working with grease. It makes a mess, especially inside the car. Not a good thing to have. Oh, we are forced to do that. Cannot have a less squeaking like that. It's gonna sound like a car with a lot of miles. Well, let's see. Oh, it's already quieted down quite a bit. It's like it just makes a little bit. And I think that is acceptable because the shaft has severe gouges on it. I see them here. But now it has grease. Hopefully it doesn't make noise anymore. I think I am happy with this, folks. That was a lot better than the screaming festival that we used to have very quiet now goes up and down that's the most important part so what we started this whole thing with and then when you turn the key off it goes away without without a symphony I like that so what we're gonna do next because I have loose grease all over the place and this grease when it gets hot it's gonna start dripping make a huge mess I'm gonna wipe down the excess grease that we have here and that should do it for this we'll start reassembling it That should do it. Well, that was not too bad. No casualties. Other than the excessive amount of leaves and all the stuff. Let me get cleaning on some of this stuff and we'll assemble this. Move on to the next thing, getting this thing ready for our trip. So before we uh, assemble everything, we spent some really good time cleaning the uh, panels. Let's just tighten these two bolts before we forget. Something is not right here. This is not supposed to move like that. Now I think I remember exactly what that thing is because I have done this before. Yes, I have. So we're going to have to stop and redo this whole, almost this whole job all over again. And I'll show you exactly why in just a moment. And this is a uh, Lexus Toyota at their finest. I think the last three that I've replaced with these, I did exactly the same thing. I'll show you exactly why. See, if you look at the old motor, there's this little sleeve. I mean, this motor is extremely expensive and Toyota and in their infinite wisdom deemed that this little sleeve, this little, what, two cent sleeve, does not come with a new motor. So we're gonna do this, put the sleeve, Here's the other sleeve. Let's do this. Now that we got our life-saving sleeves off, let's reinstall this. Yep. 
Try that again. That's much better. These little stuff that I, I don't understand. Why don't we have this entire thing together with these little two sleeves? But that's what they deemed was the case. We're gonna start by putting our very big panel off, which now is very clean, no more leaves. And we spend quite a bit of time actually cleaning these because this is a good opportunity. This is the kind of stuff that detailing a car won't get you that clean. Because they're not gonna start taking panels off. That's not realistic. Then the steering column covers. Well, I think this operation is almost done. We just gotta put the steering wheel back. Let's install our steering wheel. Which, if you did not move the car or move the wheel, just put it back exactly in the same position, which in our case was a straight ahead position. Airbag back. Still got one more thing that we're going to talk about toward the end of the video. That a small situation that is rising with this car. We'll talk about it in a bit. Let's finish this job and the other stuff we got. And we'll talk. Well, I think that is done. Let's test it one last time. That is no longer making noise going the telescope it does have a little bit of a move to it this one is extremely smooth though and the best part is now when you leave it up that finally works so now you can exit the car without having issues let's go deal with the license plate so the license plate which a car wash just picked it up and bend it. Let's remove it and we'll drill the one other bolt that is here. And before we start drilling it, we're gonna put what I call the bib. If you have children, you know what that is. If you don't, it's the anti-dribble. If you don't put this, you're gonna have oil and shavings on your car's paint and there is not a worse combination than that especially on a customer car and you know just doing this takes uh, about two seconds now we don't have to worry about it but just for good measure put a little bit more here so we can work very very freely now let's get to it. So the first thing about drilling is you got to start your your middle, which is with a center punch. We're going to try to get it as close. And an automatic punch. Sorry, I said center punch. It is vital that you get this as centered as possible. You'll never get it 100% centered, but as close as possible. The more accurate you are here, the better the end result will be. And the school of how to drill a hole in metal is very, very wild. Let's put it this way. Many people will say many things. Bottom line is it's not science, just it's a patience game. Use oil, use sharp drill bits and center your hole. There's a little bit of kind of feel to this. When you feel your bit getting hot, you gotta stop with some oil, and that's where your bib will come in place. And know your drill bits. These are high speed drill bits, meant for steel. Don't go grab your wood 
drill bits and expect it to work here. It's not. And lastly, whatever you do, don't break your drill bit in there. Because if you do, you have serious problems. That's it. We're through. Now you start gradually getting bigger, but you don't want to go too big where now the correct bolt size is too big. You know. We're gonna think this is still too small. And the oil I'm using is just, again, this is where uh, articles and speeches have been made about drilling oil. Just use motor oil, don't overcomplicate it. This is 5W30. If you feel like you want to drill lighter, use 0W20, right? At some point it was going to happen, and I think what's going to ha what's happening here is your bolt starts turning. I think one, one more size or two. You never want to get your drill bit hot. I think right now we're getting very close to our size. And the best part is, well, if you have reference, use the other hole. And if you don't have reference, license plate bolts for Toyotas, probably for many, many models, is six millimeter by one thread pitch. So an M6 bolt, see this one goes and it's loose and it doesn't go here, so we're gonna use that one for now. So now, we got the hole this big. Here's what's going on. I see thread all the way at the bottom because we were not perfectly centered on this, but the bolt became so thin that I can actually turn it. It's turning, so we're gonna attempt to move it. Or kind of fold it in. And it's moving, not in the right direction. We want to get it towards the outside. Because you can also fold the bolt in on itself. See how the bolt is loose in there? And I just gotta bite to grab it and pull it out. I have a tool that goes in here and hopefully it will grab onto our bolt. And now it's a tool stuck. Turned it, started. It's okay. I can drill it through. But since I am a perfectionist, I like to get the piece out. It's just, these are the moments of victory that you feel like you accomplished something. There it goes. Here it is. That's the half bolt. And you notice it is a f almost a full circle. We just touched the threads on the outside. Now, I look in. We don't have any more piece of bolt, but the end of this is all corroded for some reason. So let's start tapping it. We'll see. This is a six by one. I'm not liking this. Why is it stopping? Now we're definitely hitting something. There's a piece in there that is stopping this from going. You kind of see it. I can punch it off. There's a piece of the old bolt that is still in there. Something going on here. I think the end of this is bent. Like somebody tried with pliers to pull it up, pull it down to get it off the old bolt, and they bent the end of it. So, what we're gonna do to fix that, find a drill bit. It's just the right size. This is just too big. Let's see these. This is just the right size, and I think we will be able to do. These are not very sharp drill bits. 
they need to be sharpened, but we'll see if they work. Okay, now let's try it. Something is still bottoming this out. The very end of this is not straight. Yeah, I can see it. The very end of it is not straight. That's why it's bottoming out early. But I think this is deep enough where we can get a bolt and call it a day. What do you say? I think we just went through and I'm not going to push this more. We're not going to put a bolt that long. I just want it to be perfect. I think this is as close as it's going to be. And look at that. Nothing on the car. And that's what you want, because otherwise all those shavings, all that oil would have ended up on the paint. And as soon as you wipe it down, there goes the paint. Ask me how I know that. Let's install our license plate finally with two bolts. And now this one doesn't want to go in. Oh, he was just playing around. That's okay. I think we're good on this one. Okay, that's not going anywhere. I'm happy with that. Are you? So I want to put all the covers back, but I noticed these don't really screw in because they are cross-threaded. So let's, while we have our tap and die set out, let's fix the thread here. These are also six by one. So the same thread pitch as the license plate bolts. We're gonna run, run the die down and we'll tap the bolts and we're good to go. That is good. Doesn't look very nice, but it'll work. That's what we wanted to do. This one is good. So the nut must have been the issue here because I did not want to crank on these. So now I'm going to put the nut here. We're going to do the same thing to it. Let's clean them up a little bit. So we're going straight though. This nut has a cap at the end, so we're not going to be able to go all the way through it. But you clean the edge of it off. This doesn't, it just holds a plastic cover. Yeah, maxed out, I feel it. This one should be good now. So, I ordered these clips, and these are also what I call the LS clips, because the LS doesn't have the original ones. It's been an accident. And this one didn't have it for obvious reasons. It's a very weird clip that you can't just find laying around. So people improvise and the clips are like a few bucks. And let's put this cover on. There's this one. There's that one. See, it's just not sitting 100% and I wish we can get it to 100%. We will, we will. So this is another LS clip that sits right here that most people don't put back. And this makes this cover sit very correctly. 
when you install it. Just life is better when things sit the right way. There we go. Let's get a few clips. There are three clips here. And good news, the connector that broke, I was able to find it. So we will do that and a lot more connectors when we do the valve cover, which is coming up here because we have a decision to make. Let's put the car on the lift. And let me show you the little accident that we had. Yeah, things happen. And we'll recheck our work that we did two episodes ago and all the rack and pinion and all that stuff. And we'll go from there. So first, I got an alignment, I got some tires. The tires I went with are Michelin Defender 2. I've had Defenders in the past, I really like them. They're so smooth, so quiet, they last a long time. Not the greatest in the snow, but hey, I'd rather have that than some humming tires. The cross climate, many of you said, they don't hum, they don't make noise, but in a car this quiet, they will hum, and they will make noise. And with a driver that is like me, I will hear it and it will bother me a lot. However, after we put the tires on, I took it for somewhat of a long drive. We actually went almost 100 miles highway just to get it, just to make sure everything's good because we've never really driven it long on the highway. Then we had a little incident and you notice uh, this is hanging down because as we're driving, all of a sudden I heard a little like flapping sound. I'm like, what is that? By the time I slowed down and pulled over, it, it, would, it turned into a screeching, scrubbing sound. Because this, I, I left all the covers off, and this was actually not secured. And it went back, you can see how it kind of came off. And we slightly redecorated our fender liner. So what I want to do right now is make sure this is 100% secure. And actually, put all the covers on, which we are missing one cover over the transmission. And then there's two little covers on the aprons right here. Those are missing, those didn't come with the car. So let's do that. So this unfortunately got scraped on the highway. I think this is gonna at some point warrant us replacing this fender liner. I really dislike cars with fender liners that are not well. But what started this whole thing is, this bolt is not actually bolted onto anything. And that's why this side flew off and the other side stayed on. So what we are missing here is a little nut like this one. So we're gonna put it on. There we go. And then this should go. Let me look at the other side because I don't think this is how this goes. No, that is not how this goes. This actually has one of those strangest clips from Toyota Land. Oh, well, I guess we don't have that problem anymore because this broke off of it. It was, very, it was like hanging by a thread. Well, this is gonna be a problem, but we'll find another solution because uh, other than replacing a bumper or drilling holes through it, we're not gonna be able to do anything here. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have to find a solution here. If this cover sits on here, we're going to be able to hold this at least temporarily. And this is also missing the... This, this car is missing a lot of stuff, I suppose. So let's put this back. That's good. I'm going to push this fender liner a little bit and put the bolt through it. But in order to do that, before we do that actually, we gotta put the other covers on the side here, so let's get those taken care of. Let's put this cover on, and this will actually hold part of our fender liner. I think this is why this flew off, because this goes into the body. If it wants to go, if it doesn't want to go. Why don't you want to go? Why are things not going anymore? Literally told Jose 
two seconds ago. Hey, this video is going really well. Everything is coming together right. And then this happens. That's... What are you going to do? It's an old car. That's okay. For now... See, this already tightened this up, and I think the reason this came off is because this was off. What are you going to do, man? That's, that's how this works. Okay, this side is good. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, and then we'll put the big cover. So somebody in their infinite wisdom decided to put really big bolts here. One of my biggest pet peeves is having cars that have covers that have 17 sizes of bolts. And I don't want that to be my car. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace these nuts, hopefully without injury. These plastic nuts actually have metal ones because they just oversized this one. So let's remove these front three, which have been redecorated by somebody. And last but not least. Then you're going to put new nuts. They're actually metal. Let's install our big cover and see where we're at with that. Let's put the big cover, which I don't think this is original just from how flimsy it is. But it'll work. It will definitely work for now for our current purpose. Nice that they gave you the access for the oil filter. That I suppose is nice. See, this is where the aftermarket cover just doesn't doesn't line up right. Doesn't look right. But that's okay. I think I'm the only person who this will severely bother. Fortunately, parts availability is becoming an issue here. Do my best. I think we're already secure with this cover, but okay. See, this is what I don't like about the aftermarket ones. They're just so cheaply made. They just don't hold. And I'm, I'm gonna put two more here because I feel like. This is missing a piece. And put the one for a good measure. Because there's a piece missing here. And now things are well covered up. Nothing is moving. And I don't think we're going to have any more incidents now, are we? We are missing another cover that goes right around here and goes to the back. Apron covers, those we will get. And folks, before we wrap up the video, I want to talk to you about some things that are going on in the background with this car and some decisions, and maybe you guys' input will be really helpful here. So, the transmission. Remember I told you last episode that the code is gone, we might not be leaking as much, but after a really long drive, actually the code came back, I did some testing off camera, something is going on here. And this transmission is just not having it as soon as it really warms up. I, I'm not comfortable with it, and it is hemorrhaging again. That's, for lack of a better word, that's exactly what it's doing. You can see the drips all over the place here, and it's co just covered with oil. The engine oil leaks are getting better. We're going to tackle the valve covers. That should really stop things there. But the transmission. I inquired about a OEM reman transmission. Not available. And then I inquired about the solenoid. We have a solenoid problem with this. Torque converter is not engaging, occasionally not engaging, not all the time. Did some testing. Intermittently, the solenoid is not doing what it's supposed to do hydraulically. Potentially, it could be electrically. Really hard to tell. Maybe it's mechanically getting stuck. But until we take things apart and check it, and we might test good because sometimes it worked. And then the solenoid is $500. And that's when things kind of took a turn for the worse because, wait a second, I need to basically take this transmission, reseal everything because everything is leaking from the overfilling. 
and then a new oil pan, and then drill the bolt, and then this transmission will still have 600,000 miles. So we're coming to a turning point here on this transmission, actually, and I kind of put a break on this to think about it for a bit, because I want this car to be reliable as well. Just I'm really pushing the envelope here, aren't I? So our only option is either to get a remanufactured transmission from somebody else, which I really don't like that option, or get a used transmission, or rebuild this one. Rebuild this one is not really a good option because it is counterproductive. The rebuild kit from Lexus is ridiculously expensive and you still have to buy the solenoids that they don't come with it. That's the best part. And then by the time we take this out and spend all the time and all this mess, I feel like it's gonna be a little counterproductive. That's the way I see it. And then we might find a lot more damage inside. This transmission has 600,000. So I am leaning towards a used transmission. Did locate one, 45,000 miles, I really have my eyes on it. But you guys let me know what you think. Where, where do we go from here? This is kind of like, I'm going back and forth on it. The other thing is we are gonna be taking the trip. I figured if we're gonna replace this transmission, let's run it down to the ground for real. And when we say that, watch it not go to the ground and just keep going and then Okay, other than the leaks, we're okay with that. The other thing we want to do is I want to stop the leaks. This is really starting to bother me. It's dribbling all over my driveway, dribbling all over the shop. This needs to stop. We're really gonna start tackling some of the engine stuff. I need to do valve covers. I need to replace that starter, that unknown when it was replaced. So this is the stuff that you have coming, but I will say one thing, folks. We're gonna take a small break from this project, probably for a week two video cycles, three video cycles, because I need to decide on transmission. We're going on this trip. We have a lot of other videos going on. And then I have been working nonstop on this car. So we need to take a small break from it, which we're gonna do. And you might see a few weeks, maybe a couple of weeks at the most that you won't see a video on this, but we are still committed. We're still going at it. We're just kind of in the planning stages of what do we do about this little behemoth over here. And folks, to answer some of your questions, Yes, when we are done with this car to a point where I am happy with it, where it's prop, a properly restored car that I can actually drive and enjoy, you will see a full summary of how much we spent, how much labor time this, some of this stuff would have cost if you were just to take it to a mechanic and get all this fixed. And the last thing is, in the first video, I think, or the second video of this series, you saw a blue Tacoma TRD Pro without an engine in the background. I would have loved to film that video, but the owner of the car, it was his only car. He needed that car back. Filming a video on a big job like that takes forever. So we could not really hold up the customer from their only car just because we want to film. I run a real shop and these are real people with real cars that need to drive them every day. So I had to cancel, get the car done for the customer, focus on it, get it back. That car went 50,000 miles without an oil change and blew up the engine or actually it had rod knock and the current owner just bought it, didn't know, didn't do a pre-purchase inspection and that was the problem with that one. Unfortunately, we did not film it. So if you ask about it, that's what happened to the Blue Tacoma. Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you and you have yourself a wonderful day.